For over 100 years, player pianos have been entertaining households around the world. Today, we look at the two most popular products on the market. Hi, Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, like, subscribe, leave us comments. We love to interact with you guys. Today, we are talking about some really fun technology. Pianos in general are something that are considered old world almost. It's, they've been in people's homes for hundreds of years. My grandmother has one, my aunt has one, my mom got one, they want me to take lessons. A lot of the times it can seem like an old piece of technology. What's interesting is the player piano has made a little bit of a resurgence in recent years. And I think it's very interesting because it coordinates with technology that's being released and how easy it is for us to access tons of information and whatever we want to listen to at any time, we have it in our library and we can click on our phones and say, play me that song. Piano, pianos, player pianos, have fallen along with that technology. And we have some really neat options today for the entertainer at their home who says, hey, I wanna have a piano, but no one at the home plays it. Or I, hey, I really love the sound of classical music. How do I get that in my home? How do I have something that's a piano playing itself? We've all seen the pianos play themselves. It's almost like a magic trick. I, kids come into our store sometimes, they're like, mom, how is that, how is that piano playing itself? And it's just really neat because that technology is actually so much older than what you think. It's actually right at the end of, or right at the beginning of the 20th century. So in the 1900s, we had the player piano invented and it was actually a roll of paper and the roll had holes plugged in where the, the keys that correspond are supposed to play. So it was a very early piece of technology and it was very similar to what like MIDI technology is today where you're fed a piece of information and that coordinates to which key is being pressed. And these players, the player systems actually sat on the grand pianos right in the middle of the, the system or in an upright right in the center. And it was, it was at first done through pumps and you would pump and uh, the electricity would, would roll the scroll and that paper would show where the holes are being played and that would correspond to how the notes are being played. Technology advanced and with power adapters, you were able to plug it in the wall and it worked. And then things kept going and kept going and, and actually Yamaha did some really neat things in the 80s. I think the first disc of year was 1983. And so one of the, the pieces of tec technology that we're talking about today is the Yamaha disc of year. And so Yamaha really kind of transformed what the player piano was and what it is now today. And another company that, that has been doing this since the very beginning is QRS. So these are the two companies we're gonna be talking about today. So QRS is here on my left and we have it shown here today in a Ritmuller R8. And on my right is a Yamaha disc levier. It's the Enspire edition. So Yamaha has gone through a couple iterations of the disc levier. Since 1983, they've been able to pump out some really cool technology QRS has its founding all the way back in the early 20th century, right when piano rolls were getting, getting invented, they were actually making those piano rolls. So they've been doing this for a very long time. And something I applaud them for is innovation and changing with the times and saying, hey, we are, we're, move, we're not just making piano rolls anymore. We have to be making a digital component that works in any piano and can play music back, just very similar to the Yamaha Disc Levere. So really cool pieces of technology behind, behind me today. And I wanted to talk kind of about the features, what might be the right one for you if you are looking for that player piano. Uh, just in the last couple of years, HBO did uh, a really cool series called Westworld. And in the intro of Westworld, there's an old player piano playing itself. And it's just really neat because in that show, it's, it's a blend of humans that look like androids, or androids that look like humans, and humans interacting. And you start thinking about technology and, you, and in a piano, you see a piano playing itself and you're like, wait, a human usually plays that piece of technology, the piano, and they move the keys and all this. But when, it, it, it's just a neat, a neat example of how technology has really come to bridge a gap with 
art and, and it's music and you're playing a piano. And so it's just a really neat beginning. And I remember right when that came out, we had a whole bunch of people come in the store and say, hey, I'm interested in this piece of technology. I saw it on HBO's Westworld. I saw this piano playing itself. And it's really neat because the, the time period when that takes place, it's very kind of old Western. Those pianos, a lot of the times, did play themselves in early 1900s. Uh, and just today, that continued technology has progressed. And we have some really cool options that are controlled all with your phone. So both of these technologies have advanced quite a long way. And like I said, you can control them both with your phone today. But they've gone through a couple different iterations. There's been CDs, there's been floppies, there's been tape cassettes. There's been a lot of technology that's pushed through the years. And what people have, when they look at modern day player pianos, what they expect is a big old box somewhere down below the piano. Um, I've even heard people who've hit their knees on them before when they're getting up. They're like, oh, I hit my knee on the player system on my piano. Can you guys take that off for us? We don't use it that much. And I think what was happening was people were buying player pianos and saying, hey, I can't use this technology as much as I want because I have to buy these certain CDs that correspond to the technology. Both of these companies, Yamaha and QRS, have addressed that with modern technology, with streaming services, and with libraries that can be controlled all from your iPhone or Android device. A lot of the times people have an iPad that they keep on the music rest and they control their music library through their apps for their respective companies. Some of the neat things about the Yamaha Disclavier and why Disclavier might be the right option for you, Yamaha has been doing this all in-house for a very long time and they continuously make innovation and updates to their technology where they continuously promote their stuff and say, hey, let's do it this way. Let's, let's study the hand and how can we get the sensors a little bit more accurate. And they build it all in-house. So something, one of the benefits with the Disc Levere is you're getting the box and the piano from the same manufacturer. And it's installed at the factory. So when they're building a Disc Levere, they're actually building the piano and the Disc Levere at the same time. And it comes into like a very custom fit when they're making it. And it's, and it's right from directly from Yamaha. And that could be a benefit because it's exactly set up by the company who built the piano. And it's and and we've realized that that's a really nice benefit, but it's also can be constricting when you're picking which disc levier might be right for you. There's three options on both of these. The Yamaha disc levier has three different levels. The QRS system has three different levels. The QRS, on the other hand, is installed almost exclusively after the fact. So QRS makes these, they have a piano brand, Story and Clark, but they license their QRS equipment to different manufacturers and also to stores, music stores around the country. So the really cool thing about the QRS is you can find your piano first. You can say, hey, I'm really picky about what I want my piano to sound like. And you can find that perfect piano and you can spend as much or as little as you want. And then you can pay for the additional add-on of the player system. So a lot more versatility with the QRS on what you want to put it on. So if you find that old Steinway that you've always been looking for, or if you're looking for a Mason and Hamlin or an old Baldwin where they don't even make them in the US anymore, and you're like, hey, I really like this, but I want the player system on it, you can add that QRS afterwards. And there's a lot of technicians around the country who are very well trained in this. We have a couple here in San Antonio. There's a lot here in Texas and around the country. We, we work with technicians around the country. They really love the technology. It's very easy to install. And really, it's neat because you as the piano player, if you are a piano player, can pick that perfect piano first. Whereas on the Yamaha, if you wanted to get that highest end player system, if you wanted to get, so they have the classic as their just playback system, which is what we have here on our disc clavier today. The playback, only playback means through your, through your apps, you can play back any songs in the recordings and play the songs or the radio or whatever you're streaming onto it. You can play that directly to it, but you can't record on it. So through the years, especially with Yamaha disc claviers, one of, the key, one of the key features has always been the record and playback. And when the new Inspires came out in, I want to say it was 2014, they, they split those two features. So they were like, let's have an affordable disc clavier that's only playback, and let's have one that's record and playback. And so there's a split there. And the playback option, the most affordable option, is only available on the GB1 their very entry line baby grand piano. If you wanted to move up to the record and playback version, that's going to be on the GB1, but it's also going to be all the way up to their C series. 
And then at the C3X, which is a very expensive piano, that's when they introduced that hi-fi hi system of the disc levier that has record and playback. It also has a silent system on it. But that only becomes available at the C3X price point. And so you quickly realize that if you wanted to really get the best player system that Yamaha has to offer, you also have to get one of their best pianos. Again, harkening back to the QRS, where you can pick which system works best for you and kind of match it to the piano of your choice, whether that be a high-end Kawhi or an old Steinway. And so just a little more versatility with the QRS. And uh, with, the, with the Yamaha, like I said, it's installed at the factory. Big bonus as well is factory installation. And you also get that warranty with Yamaha. With QRS, they do have an install warranty. And through the technician you're working with, they usually have a, a type of warranty for all of their work. So that's just something to think about when you are trying to pick that perfect system for you. Um, and something to keep in mind that Yamaha does install their own. QRS is a little more versatile and can be added to any piano. Another thing to consider is the access to content that you have. The Yamaha comes with about 500 built-in songs and has access to a subscription surface where you pay for disc levier radio, is what they call it. There's about 30 different channels that are built into that, and it, and it recycles content and says, hey, we're going to play this from this playlist, we're going to play from this playlist, Christmas tunes, show tunes, Broadway tunes, Beatles tunes. They have these different radios. There's about 30 of them. And like I said, it's a, it's a yearly subscription that you purchase, but it does have about 500 that are just built in to the software. On the other hand, on the QRS, QRS, like I said, has been making player piano systems for about 100 years, or over 100 years, and they have access to 45,000 scrolls that they're constantly updating into their system. So the number is always changing when you look at how many are built into their catalog. They have a subscription service as well where you have access to a, a giant library. It's over 10,000 songs, and you can select from those songs and play back and say, hey, I want to hear this song by the Beatles, or I want to hear this song by Chopin. And you can select that from their list. They give you 3,000 built in. So you do get more access here with built in songs. You don't have the option of radio where it kind of just recycle or continuously plays different radio stations of, of piano music or of when it has sound effects, basically. So there's, there's bands that play with the piano and that full kind of playback sound. Both of those have that option. There's a speaker that's installed on both of these pianos where drums and accompaniment plays through with the piano. What's really neat is that the QRS gives you uh, access to the whole library at first. If you buy it through a dealer, they'll say, hey, you have access to the full subscription for a year. After a year, we're going to just give you 3,000 of randomly selected from that list. But you do get to kind of play around with the full subscription and see if it's something that you like, that giant access to library. So it's over 10,000 songs to choose from. On this one, you have that radio station. You also have something called Disc Levier TV that syncs to your television. We highly recommend going through a professional setup with that. Most stores that sell a Disc Levier will also have a setup option for you to sync it to your television um, and get that all playing together for you. So really great options here. There are just a couple differences that we did want to highlight. Um, like I said, the professional installation from Yamaha and that streaming radio station and the TV. On the QRS, it's really the versatility of being able to add this at any point to any piano that you wanted to. And also that bigger library that's constantly being added to. Both these companies are constantly innovating and adding features to these, but these really are an amazing, amazing accomplishment in themselves. There's no boxes that you can see on these pianos. It's all underneath the piano, which is a very nice feature. Like I said, and just in the last 10 years, they had big old CD boxes that were attached to the right side or the left side of your piano kind of an eyesore and also a hazard for your knees. If you swing your knees real quick from one direction to the next, you can hit your knee on the box. But all that is going to be tucked up underneath the pianos now. Just really beautiful designed and a cool feature on any piano. <laughs>
As you can see, both of these systems have incredible user interfaces with your phone. You can select straight from a list of the song you want to hear. You can control the volume. Really cool features. I did want to touch on the QRS, the different systems that they do offer. The QRS Pianomation 3 has three different options. The first option, which is on this one here, is the playback bundle, similar to the Yamaha Inspire Classic. Playback only. You select from the list of the song you want to hear, and it plays it back for you. Has an accompaniment, has a lot of cool features, sounds great, but it does not record you playing. This, you have to move up to that second tier, which on the Inspire is called the Inspire Standard. On the QRS, it's, it's QRS Pianomation 3. It's the playback and record bundle. So on that bundle, your kid can sit down and play a piece, or one of your friends who's an accomplished pianist can come over and they can play a whole song for you and it will actually save on your device so that you can always recall and say, play that one time where little Susie played Twinkle Twinkle Little Star when she was six. It's a really cool feature. I always tell parents, if you want to capture moments more than just a camera playing or, or more than just uh, recording a sound, you get their actual keystrokes on either of these in that second tier price point. The third level is going to be the high fidelity playback on Yamaha. Um, and on their, on their mid-tier, on that standard, you also do get a silent system, which can turn your whole piano into a quiet playing system where you put headphones on and it plays along. We have videos of silent systems. It's a really cool piece of technology. Yamaha offers it in that mid-bundle. Mid, uh, on the QRS, it's actually at their highest level bundle, um, and that's the playback record and practice bundle. And so on that, on the QRS website, you can find updated pricing. They're very transparent about this is how much the system cost, and then you work with the dealer to get it installed. They have all that pricing, and I'm not going to say it here because you might be watching this in a year or two when they've updated their pricing, but you can find pricing information on the playback bundles from QRS. Yamaha, you're going to find MSRP prices on their website. Again, it's something that's constantly updating every year. And you'll see that you have to be looking at the piano and the disc levier option together. It's not something that's separate, like on the QRS website, where you're going to be looking and say, hey, this is how much just the system is in the three different levels. Yamaha is going to be like, this is our C3X with the Inspire Pro. So their third level is that Inspire Pro. They have the standard and the classic. You have playback, playback record, and playback record in practice. Thank you guys again for watching. Player pianos can be a tricky subject. If you have any questions at all, please contact us. We'd love to hear you guys from you guys and what your needs are. There's a lot of different solutions for player pianos and a lot of good questions that we probably didn't cover the answer to here in the video, but you can always reach out to us. We love to talk player pianos. They're just one of the coolest pieces of technology in the piano world. We're Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, but we serve the country. AlamoMusicCenter.com, AlamoMusic.com, sorry. And you can find us on the web there. You can talk to one of our available chat agents or give us a call. I'm Patrick Marr. Thank you guys for watching.